so from an internal Broncom perspective, just to elaborate on some of the assessment work and talk through about the talk about the flexibility um, that our assessment solutions can bring. So Dan, over to you. Okay, let me just switch presentations here. So I'm just going to end that slideshow and just switch to another one. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Um, so thank you, everybody. I think it's been a really interesting morning. It's been really good hearing from uh, colleagues out in trusts of how Broncom's really making their life better, helping them really manage their data. But what I've come in to talk to you about this morning, which should again be for about a 20 minute, half hour session, is to look at the idea of assessment um, without compromise and really taking that feel that for, um, for Broncom, really it's as flexible as you want it to be. So I'm working on two screens here, so I apologize if you keep going like that. It's just so I can check everything's working correctly. There we go. So my areas for discussion today is to look at our data across schools and trusts and what kind of data you may have coming in and out um, that you may need. Then actually then start to have a little look at the out of the box solutions that we have with Broncom that are available to you immediately. And then really it's the area of my expertise at the moment, which is working on customized assessments. Um, I spend a lot of my time working with maybe smaller trusts, uh, maybe trust without um, the luxury of the data managers that we've spoken to this morning to help them get that assessment that they want. And we're going to have a look at some real life examples of that and what schools and trusts have set up. Um, and then we're going to have a quick look at the Mac data reporting, which, you know, Mark touched on when he looked at Mac Vision um, but, and actually started to look at how we can aggregate some of that data through. So that's the plan for today's session as we go through with me. So assessment, assessment everywhere. Yes, we've got those statutory returns, and some of this is very much based around primary, where your MI system has to return EYFS, has to return your phonics, your key stage one data, your multiplication tests. Things such as SATs come in the other way, or you're just sending through maybe just your writing data. As you start to move through into secondary, it's a little bit of a kind of a tumbleweed area until you get to key stage four, and then at key stage four, the data is coming from the exam boards, but maybe coming into your systems for analysis. So Broncom is already set up, as lots of people know, for managing and dealing with those statutory returns. And then we've got that standardized assessments that people use. So across various schools, you can have people doing NFER testing. You can have PIRA and PUMA testing going on. You may have CAT tests that are helping develop and give you standardized information. You've got GCSE data being imported, BTEC information being calculated, let alone the key stage five subjects. And one that I've also missed off of this is working with FFT. So you might also be working with FFT information to help group and standardize your data through there. So I think really there's lots of different piles of data coming into your system. That's really good to see, but it's also important to make sure that you can don't get kind of lost the wood from the trees. And for us, we think it's all about you. And really, this is what's really important for me is it's more about, it's not about the tail wagging the dog. We are not providing you with a standardized system that you must use. For us, it's about Broncom being able to meet the needs of your assessment policy. And that's, again, what people like myself and Scott spend a lot of time doing is working with people's individual assessment needs to make sure it, it meets what they want it to do and want it to happen. So let's look at some of the paths we get out of the box. So immediately with the Broncom system, you have a primary tracker available to you. So this allows you to do summative and formative assessment, which we'll look at in a minute. We've just released in the last few weeks our Key Stage 2 dashboard, which allows you to look at and do comparative analysis of data across year six, uh, starting to pull out that information on progress and information in there. We've had our Key Stage 4 dashboard running for a couple of years now, and that's constantly being refined to meet the needs of your um, individual schools and also to allow you to have that deep drilling down information down to the point of being able to see individual classes and students and information there. And that allows you then also to compare across not only national statistics, but aggregated statistics across schools and also um, comparing different assessment points, say mock exam periods in year 11 moving through. We allow you to record standardized tests. This is something that's come out recently. So you can actually record raw and convert to standardized scores like we saw with NFER and Puma and things like that. We can also develop assessment grids that allow you to be able to see progress over time between two statutory points. And we can also do curriculum assessment, which is kind of your own homegrown, maybe secondary formative assessment or KPIs maybe that you're tracking 
And lastly, as we looked at on the previous slide, those statutory assessments. So that information that you wish to transmit straight into then maybe go off to the DFE can also be collated. And this is all out of the box. This isn't just that there's one assessment system you have to use that's set up in that style. These are all here for you to use. So let's have a look at how the primary tracker works from an out of the box situation. So we have our summative assessment. So this allows you to be able to set up which subjects you wish to use. So at the moment, I've just got this screenshot example of four core subjects. So maths, reading, um, science and writing. And then it allows you to record in your own grading as you wish. At the moment here, I happen to have greater depth expected working towards and below. Those are the four gradings I've got within this. And then it's recording this at a year level. So at the moment, this is a year five tutor group, and I'm able to record at that level how they're getting on with that. But I can actually also record lower than this if I wanted to. So I can have students working above and below their year groups and be able to call that, record that just in a summative state. We then also have our formative tracker. And our formative tracker is actually being set up automatically with the national curriculum. So here's some year five. You'll see this year five class being a lot used a lot as we move through here. And we're looking at a baseline in mathematics. And what you can see here is I've just got a little portion of this. It does go off the screen uh, in a lot with sort of 50 different statements. But it's had the national curriculum put into it and it's showing some statements on measurement. And it's saying, here, you know, calculate and compare areas of a rectangle. And then you've got the ability to record them that whether they're expected below working towards or greater depth. And what's really powerful with this is this is customizable. So I have a few schools I'm working with at the moment, a few trusts that have got their own bespoke um, KPI kind of formative assessment, and we're able to put that in for them. The other thing we also have is this little information button on these screens here, and this allows you to also set up and record below, at, and above evidence. So you can actually, within this, be able to show people and guide them what they would be expecting to see of a child who is at greater depth in that section and be able to complete that. You can also, within this, when you click on these to change these da this data, you can actually record evidence. So it starts to work a little bit like tapestry would for allowing you to record information directly in the MIS system of the formative assessment that child's undertaken. We have built in reporting for our primary tracker. So straight out of the box, you're able to get things such as Venn diagrams. So this is showing me reading, writing and maths, and it's showing me how many in the middle I've got at the expected standard. Um, and working through it and even show me the ones that are outside. And when this is live, you can click on this and it'll actually show you the students that are, are, it relates to. And also within the tracker, you can look at things here. So you've got reading, writing, maths, and you've got baseline and end of autumn terms. You can see how many were below expected at and at greater depth. And you can see how that changes over time. So if we look here for reading for pupil premium pupils, there's quite a low level working towards at the baseline, only half really at standard. But then by the time we got to autumn term, half were at standard, but there was also another half that had got to greater depth. So those students had been moved on. So if you're having meetings with your staff to be able to talk that through, this is this is really useful information that's available to you. And again, out of the box. We talked and mentioned briefly about dedicated dashboards. So what I've got here on screen is two shots of our dedicated dashboards that you have available. This first one in the top corner is our Key Stage 2 dashboard. And what you can see here is this is showing an end of autumn term. So this might be a mock, mock set of SAT exams you've sat. You've entered the data in, data in, and it's been able to show you how many are at the higher standard of reading, writing and maths, just at reading, writing and maths, and actually then breaking it down by custom groups. So it looks quite similar to the Key Stage 4 dashboard and allows you to drill down and look at specific demographic information and analyse them at quite a finite level on how they've achieved their data. So this is not just for the end of key stage two for you to upload your data in when we do SATs next year and you plonk them in in June to be able to get that analysis out that we've all done on spreadsheets before now. It can also be used to help you develop and improve and see those gaps within your year sixes as you move through. Here I've got a screenshot of the um, year 11 dashboard. Now, this is very good because this allows you to compare things. So here I've got a year 11 autumn grades. So maybe there were mock exams that were taken in November against their target grades. So it's able to show me their progress eight. OK, it's working on old DFE calculations when they last came out, but it's still a really good stick in the ground to know where you are. And it's able to then show you a comparison. So here you can see at the moment the autumn grades are slightly below the target grades. So minus 0.24 at the moment. And this then allows you to dynamically drill down through this data 
to be able to look at the individual students, the individual classes, the individual teachers. And even when you get to that point and you click on individual student, it will show all their other grades, just like some other products on the market allow you to do. And that's built in straight out of the box of the Broncom system. So capturing data your way is very easy to set up. I'm not going to go through this in, in my new kind of techie detail, but it's just to give you that kind of overview. So what you do is you start off by setting your grade sets and mark sets. So grade sets would be that you've got a specific range or numbers or letters you're going to use to set marks and then numbers between sort of like zero, say it's a standardized score, so between zero and 125, something like that. And you set up your terms of assessment. So these are terms outside of what you've maybe set up within your MIS for taking the register. So you may call them AP1 for assessment point one. You may still call them spring, summer, autumn. You may call them whatever you want to do, but you can then set that up within your MIS system. And then what we do is you're able to create the grade sets to give you an assessment type. So it's pulling in that kind of almost that validation for you. So the validation is built in and set up. It means if you change that grading criteria, it's very easy to change at this top level without having to rewrite the whole mark sheet and you set up your assessment type. And then all of this then feeds together into an actual design of a mark sheet. And what I've done here is just shown you a very simple mark sheet that basically captures maths and reading in the autumn and the spring and there's one summer there, okay? And you've got complete control over this. You can make these hidden columns, you can make them read only, you can change the color, you can change the format and look of these columns and we'll go through and support you setting this up and making sure you have ownership. Because it's very important that people like me don't come along, set up all your system and then walk away. You need to be able to manage that as you move into future years and maybe tweak and adapt it as you go. So it's really important that we leave you not only with a working system, but also working knowledge of that system to be able to develop it later on. And by completing this mark sheet design, you end up with something that looks like this. So here, same year five class, but you can see we've been able to show, and you can kind of almost cross-reference this a little bit, that we've got the autumn maths and reading data, the spring maths and reading data, and then the summer data. It's a scaled score. We've set it up as a scaled score, so you've got a limitation on there, and we're able to fill the data in. So this is what I really like to produce when I work with schools, is something that's very simple for the teacher. This is literally just a page that they open that they fill the numbers into. We're not trying to scare them with loads of craziness going on. We're just looking at gathering that information because that's what's really key is getting that data and information into the system. Once you've got it into the system, you can do more things with it. Here's just a screen I put together that shows all the different type of calculations you can do on those columns. So some of these are quite, quite simple, but it's being able to pull the current age out of that student. We've got there, we've got the ability to put in exam results and statutory results, and you'll see that later on, where you've got a mark sheet and it's showing you maybe previous assessment and attainment data, but also the ability to maybe multiply data or do a mean, or more importantly, an if then else. So you're starting to get to that point of starting to almost put in conditional formatting. And you'll see some of that in the shots we'll see in a minute, that you can actually almost conditionally format and color your data to help give you a, a more, a more a colorful overview of seeing what's going on, okay? So you can do that as well. So it's very powerful, the kind of calculations you can apply and add to your columns within your customized assessment sheet that you create. So let's have a look at the system. So this was the one we saw a minute ago. So this was the sheet you've seen kind of being designed, capturing those standardized scores. And as you remember, I wanted this to be nice and simple for the teacher. What we've then been able to do from this is we've been able to take this information here, if I click on the right screen, there we go, and we've been able to produce like a base, a kind of almost like a, a broadsheet to give you information. So what this does is it's taken their information here. First of all, it's color coded it here, so it's showing who's at, above and below those certain elements of what they're looking for, okay? It's also given you some other information that's there, so it's given us an FFT grade that the school has decided to log against those students. It's also pulled in their key stage one grade. So the teacher's not had to go looking for this. This has been designed at an SLT level and is now available to all. So when they look at their broadsheet for their class, there's lots of information to show what's going on in one go, which is really good. You can see here I've completed, like we've got here, the data for the spring and the summer, autumn here, not the summer. So you can see the spring and the data, uh, spring and autumn data being reflected across. We've also got the ability to hold our targets that have been entered. And here is some color coding that they wanted to be able to see whether they were on target or below target and how they're getting on. So we're able to have that kind of 
progress. And this can even be designed so that it actually de designs progress at certain points during the year. Maybe if they started at 100, you'd expect them in autumn to be between 100 and 105. You expect them in spring to be 105 to 110. And you expect them in summer maybe to be 110 and above. So you can actually develop that within your system using those um, uh, nested if then else statements. Before it looks like I'm spending a lot of time looking at primary, here's a secondary example of a tracker sheet that's been developed by, for somebody. So this is storing a 0 to 9 grade uh, assessment system. So it's got the 0 to 9 grade here and it's got a target grade. So you can see this is gray, which means they can't change it. It's been deliberately designed so it shows information and it's then fixed. And then you can see here where they've been putting in autumn data at two assessment points here in autumn one and autumn two. So as an example, if we look across Wesley here, Target of nine, got a nine, so they're on target. But then you can see when it came around to the second autumn, he got a seven, so he's below target. And these two columns here are automatically calculated, so it gives you a very quick view to be able to see what's going on with these mark sheets. What I'd like to look at now really is aggregated reporting. So we've seen a few examples of what can happen in your MIS if you're just working on a, as a school and how that's going to work and reflect through on what you're doing there. But now we want to look at, at map vision. So following on from what Mark said this morning, you know, we've got an aggregated database that will take all of your schools and truck within your trust into one central point and allow us to then be able to see through things such as Power BI, uh, the information for that school. And Mark showed you some of those dashboards that were in vision. And I'm going to kind of focus a little bit on the Power BI section now. So let me just flick to that to show you what that's going to look like. Let me just quickly uh, go back to here for one second. Here we go. So we're going to look at two different types of dashboard here that we've developed. This is one for a, uh, a school that we've developed um, where they're recording one, two and three. And they're recording this to be three to be a greater depth grade, two to be an expected grade and one to be below. And what it's doing is it's calculating the read, write uh, maths prediction of whether they're two threes. So this one's all got two. So, of course, there are two, three or whether they're all threes. So it's got a three grade here. So this is an example of one of the sheets that we've got here. And let's see how they wanted this analysed when we start to look at it at a trust level point of view. So if I just quickly flick to do that and then do this and then do this, here we go. So what we're able to do here is we're able to look at the dashboard that was developed for them. So this is held within Power BI. This is taking live dynamic data from this, this, the databases. So it's updated every night within Power BI and available to you. And what this got, has got here is the ability for you to be able to pick which school you want. So here I've got all my schools within my trust selected. And then I've got my academic year selected and then my year group. So you can see for year five, we're recording in this projection in the spring, the ARE and the um, how many at greater depth. OK, if I change it to a different year group, so say I change it to year four, what you'll see is it will dynamically change. These aren't fixed tables. These tables are dynamically preparing themselves based on your aggregated data. So here you can see it's been able to bring in the multiplication score. So not only have we got how many students are at ARE and how many are at greater depth, but we've also got the ability to look at the year four multiplication score. And if I go to another example, which would be year six, you can see the multiplication score has changed into the grammar, punctuation and spelling. So we were able to take the information that they had and we were able to take that across all their schools, about 16 schools in this trust, and be able to aggregate it and bring it together to allow the CEO to have this dashboard showing really what they wanted. And this was presented to me as a spreadsheet, as a set of spreadsheet titles. This is the kind of data we want. These are the kind of subgroups we want it broken down into. And actually, we've been able to give them more than they want. And this has actually been um, amazing for that trust to be able to see all that information together. We can also even do um, for reception as well. So we're able to show reception information and show that information or again aggregated from across all the schools okay and this is something that we've been able to do for them so the actual development of these bi dashboards i've been able to i have a bank of time with our bi developers in-house at promcom and i'm able to kind of be that conduit between the school and the developer to get these developed and tested and then rolled out and applied to their vision for them so it works for them really well so it's been a really powerful um working together to make that work for us if i just go back to my powerpoint This model here is slightly different. This is a school that uses numbers to record their data and they have a scale from zero to 36 working across the primary years. And what they have is they have a summer grade and then they have autumn, spring and summer that they record. 
and then the idea is they're recording and showing the progress through so here we can see they should be making points of progress so from 24 to 26 is better than one point of progress hence it comes up as doing better this person stayed the same 23 23 so they've stayed the same this person here has made one level of progress so they're on target so this is their broadsheet showing that kind of information that we saw previously to give them that kind of overall view for the class in that individual score. What I want to show you though is when we look at it within Matt uh, Vision, we've been able to develop a dashboard for them again against their requirements. And what this is able to do is to show that summarized information of the grading and also be able to color code it to show at, above and below for that age range. But also when I go down further down in this list, I'm able to start to look at matrix views as well. So I can actually see which students at the baseline autumn, spring and summer are meeting their targets. So you're able to get that view of who's below and above the data that you're looking for. We're also able to see the average point score and attainment score for those different ethnicity groups. So we're not only looking at the attainment, but we're also looking at their progress. So we can actually see who's making the right amount of points of progress. So at the moment, looking at this, the SENK kids um, are making almost uh, greater than expected progress over time in comparison, say, to the free school meals kids or no free school meals kids who are only making sort of one step of progress. And this is the kind of information they were doing manually by hand on a spreadsheet. We can also look at expected attainment as well. So we can look at what grading they're getting at the moment across each of the different terms, and we can see how they're progressing over time. And you can see here some of this drop is between where the lockdown happens. So this would be the uh, the baseline is coming in in September. And then, of course, when they're starting to look again later on during the time, of course, it's dropped off a little bit. So you've got that data coming through here. And again, this is fully flexible. You can pick your year groups. It's mm -hmm. dynamic against when the data has been entered and you're able to then search and work through that. So these are two really simple examples showing you how data can be aggregated and built through um, directly within the um, MIS to be able to show you how that information works and pulls together. So hopefully from what we've seen today, you've been able to see that we're able to take any kind of real kind of um, structure that you're looking to do within your, within your data, work with you to help get that set up. And then ultimately, if you're working as a trust, be able to support you to aggregate that information together. And this is as well as a layer on top of the um, bespoke, uh, the out of the box information that we can give you with products such as our primary tracker and just some of our standard uh, key stage four tracking and dashboard products that we, we offer to you there. So I'd really like to thank you for your time today. I hope that's been useful for you to be able to just kind of see the kind of things that can be done and really to understand that, that flexibility that we offer across the Broncom products. Um, and then uh, just for you to be able to um, see if you've got any questions for me at all.